Hey there, Dr. Anna Maria Helt at Osada Natural Health. Welcome to Monday's Mushrooms episode 20, where I'm going to talk about some really cool tiny mushrooms known as bird's nest fungi. So bird's nest fungi, you could probably guess why they're called that by looking at them. They're super cool and really tiny. Many species of this fungus around the world, including apparently in my garden here in Durango. So bird's nest fungi, at least uh, some of them belong to the Cyathus genus. Cyathus means cup roughly. So in ancient Greece, there were these cups that were used for filling drinking cups with wine. And so what you're seeing here are some dried up specimens that I just ran outside and grabbed. These have been sitting out for a while and the fruiting bodies that you're seeing here, the little cups you're seeing here are pretty dried out, but you can see the very obvious cup shape. Now, going back to the name bird's nest, uh, that comes from the fact that it, well, looks like a nest with eggs in it. So the one growing here and in many other parts of the country and the world is Cyathus stercorius the dung bird's nest fungi or dung loving bird nest fungi and it's called this because it is frequently found on poo of different sorts but it's also frequently found on mulch you know wood chips things like that which is where it was in my garden actually and some mulch hiding under a very large dandelion that was providing shade for this um, we've had a very rainy, uh, nice wet monsoon season here in southwestern Colorado, which allowed this mushroom to grow. Now, uh, these are saprobes, meaning it's a type of mushroom that feeds on organic matter. So it could be poop, it could be wood. In fact, a lot of Cyatha species are wood decaying fungi. They don't need to grow with a particular host like the mycorrhizal fungi do. So for instance, things like chanterelles that have to grow in association with the roots of a specific tree. No, Cyathus mushrooms don't need to, to be hooked into a plant to grow. It just needs whatever organic matter that it happens to like to eat to grow. Uh, and so here are the eggs. Uh, the so-called eggs here and there might be four or five of them in this case you can see just a few of them and these are actually filled with mushroom spores which is one of the ways that the mushroom reproduces related to that these are also known as splash cups because what can happen is when a big drop of rain lands in the cup it can launch one or more of these little eggs out of the cup they wind up attaching to nearby plants drying out and releasing their spores it's a really cool way to reproduce it's not entirely understood how it works but it's just fascinating that these little things get knocked out by a drop of water to help the mushroom spread so this uh mushroom this is what it looks like before it's fully mature so it's this furry little fungus that will eventually open up into these really cool looking cups so they're tiny right these things are the size of the tip of my finger they look really big here because i've blown them up for you to see them now these mushrooms have actually been studied in the lab and they have some interesting chemistry they have uh, different categories of molecules in them with different biological activities that may possibly be of benefit to us. Now, these are lab studies done in test tubes and in cultured cells, which may or may not mean anything in terms of our own physiology, but some, some interesting results nevertheless. So there's a class of chemicals called cyathus cavins, which are antioxidants, so they kind of act like rust-oleum to quench free radicals. And part of that activity extends to protecting DNA from damage. So DNA, our blueprint basically, our chromosomes. Again, this was just a lab-based study and you know how that translates to whether chemicals from these mushrooms actually do protect our DNA from damage and subsequent cancer-causing mutations remains to be seen, but interesting nevertheless. There's another category of uh, chemicals known in this uh, found in this mushroom known as stercorins and these for the chemical nerds out there are diterpenes or diterpene based and these are interesting so when applied to uh, a specific cultured cell type called pc12 cells in a dish it stimulates 
those cells to mature into nerve cells. And so they grow these little projections similar to those that we see on nerve cells that are important in transmission of a signal. It's a common cell culture model used to find things that stimulate nerve cell regeneration or nerve cell maturation with the thought that these could be useful for, for say, spinal injuries or head injuries or Alzheimer's and such. And so this study found that stercorins from this bird's nest fungus stimulated the production of something called NGF, nerve growth factor, which again stimulates the maturation of nerve cells. And in the same study, the same chemicals reduced the inflammatory response mediated by a microglial cell line and culture. Microglia are macrophages. They're a type of immune cell that are specifically found in the brain and the spinal cord. And so extracts from these fungi were able to impact the function of these cells that are important for the maintenance of our brain. So some very preliminary results for a really interesting fungus, splash cups here, or bird's nest fungi, that you know remain to be seen uh, what that means for us people. Not that these mushrooms need to do anything for us people. They're really just cool to know about in and of themselves. So here are some splash cups here actually filled with rainwater. So there you are, bird's nest fungi. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as usual, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section. I do respond to everyone and take care y'all.